came off Elliott and it was in by Walsh. The old campaigner beats Peter Schmeichel. Marshall got away with that. He gets away with the ball briefly and continues and scores! Sheer determination. Cole. It's 2-1. And the score is Solskjaer right on the stroke of half-time. Neville. Norwich back on his feet. Here's Cole. Cole again. Good save. And he's got to get up again and he can't. Solskjaer gets his second. And Keller's very disappointed with that. And now inside Watson. Here's Bergkamp, first time. Some of Newcastle's build-up play has been a touch ponderous. They certainly haven't been hitting the front man early. This is Lee, though. And maybe he represents a better hope. Bold going with him, good turn. Spreer's kick. Peacock. Elliot. In his entire career, he'd scored only two goals up to the end of January. Since then, and since being moved into a midfield position, that is his sixth. Merson. Arsenal full of positive intent at the moment. This is Ian Wright. That's a great save by Sergeyev. Well, now to this evening day, Paul Kitson setting them on their way after just five minutes. The pairing of Hartson and Kitson for nearly £6 million may well save the Hammers from the drop. Hartson's flick on, Kitson with the second. Payback time for the Hammers. West Ham's aerial bombardment continued. Moncur's free kick, the ideal ammunition for Hartson. The Hammers en route to their biggest win of the season. David Pleat's side was strangely out of sorts today. Their problems increased when David Hurst was sent off for clashing with Rio Ferdinand. It just wasn't Wednesday's day. Hugo Porfirio's electrifying pace ride the life out of Wednesday. His cross neatly dispatched by Hartson for number four. Wednesday threatened only spasmodically. Ian Nolan's run and cross should have been dealt with by McCloscoe. It wasn't, and Benito Carboni stabbed the ball home. But Upton Park was giving it five just before the end. Porfirio threaded a pass for Kitson's hat-trick. A satisfactory afternoon's work, if you know what I mean, Harry. Well, we've been in good form. It's not, you know, it's not suddenly come. We're, we're one defeat in nine. Um, and we've been playing playing well for a long time now. Since Hartson and Kitson and Low Mass have arrived, it's given us an, a new belief and a bit of strength, and uh, we look a much better team. Southampton's 2 0 win at the Dell means they can sleep a little, just a little easier this evening, while Blackburn, with two games remaining and on 41 points, still have a worrying time ahead. Southampton's opening goal came after 22 minutes, and it was made by the club's player of the year, Egil Ostenstad, who picked out Robbie Slater. Southampton then on their way, but they needed another, so they sent for Letizier, Matt Letizier. He came on as a substitute and needed just six minutes to work his magic. Southampton had three priceless points in the bag. But there was controversy towards the end of the match when Blackburn's Tim Sherwood was sent off for allegedly spitting at Jim Magilton. Sherwood got his marching orders. It finished 2-0 to Southampton, who now face Aston Villa in their final game. Mathematically, we can still go down, and, and really, until that is not the case, then we still have to be looking to get something from the last game at Villa. 99 years of league football at Roker Park ended with the best possible scenario, a Sunderland victory. The breakthrough came when Duncan Ferguson handled Michael Gray's first half cross. Paul Stewart did the business, and Roker Park breathed a mighty sigh of relief. The occasion needed something a little special, and Chris Waddle duly supplied it with this free kick. His first goal in the Sunderland shirt, the roar was deafening. 
Waddle had a hand in the third goal too. His cross headed home by substitute Alan Johnston. But Sunderland not quite safe yet. At least we're, st we're still in there and we're still fighting. And the players, if they keep giving me that, um, I've got a feeling we'll be, p we'll be playing in the Premier League next year. For 31 years, they've survived in the top flight, but tonight Coventry manager Gordon Strachan says they're probably favourites to go down. Just after the interval, Coventry fell behind to Gary Rowett's free kick, which skimmed off David Burrow's head. Six minutes later, Coventry were back on level terms. Daly fouled Dublin, penalty awarded, Gary McAllister held his nerve. Would that be the springboard for Coventry? Unfortunately, the answer was no. They were rocked again when a mix-up by their defenders let in Sturridge. Derby 2-1 winners, not even victory at Spurs next week, will guarantee Coventry's survival. A riveting game at the Riverside with Borough fans subjected to their usual range of emotions. A rush of blood from the Villa keeper Mark Bosnich presented Ravanelli with his 30th goal of the season. And he made sure everyone knew. There was a touch of deja vu about Borough's second. Again, Bosnich going walkabout, Mikel Beck keeping his call to score. Borough's confidence was sky high. But Villa clawed their way back into the game. A spot of head tennis in the box was followed by a powerful finish from Hugo Ekiog. And the Borough nerves were stretched to breaking point when Savo Milosevic outpaced the Borough defence to equalise. It seemed two priceless relegation points had gone. More drama as Villa's Steve Staunton was sent off for dissent. Then a controversial penalty as Craig Hignett launched one last foray into the Villa box. Gareth Farrelly adjudged to have pulled him down. Despite Villa protests, Ravanelli kept his nerve and Borough's long and exhausting season took a turn for the better. Leeds have only scored 27 goals in the league, the lowest in all four divisions. Their defence has been tight, so perhaps no real surprise that this game finished without a goal. A poor game saw Chelsea's claim for a penalty turned down. Even Leeds manager George Graham thought Viali had been fouled. He wasn't. It finished nil-nil. Steve Lee and Gary Richardson reporting there. Now, Nottingham Forest are down, as we say, and it's now two from eight to fill the remaining relegation places. Even Everton in 12th place are not safe. One thing is certain, Coventry will be relegated if they don't win their final game at Spurs next Sunday. We've seen the top, but Sheffield Wednesday's European hopes were dealt a blow by that heavy defeat at West Ham. Besides finishing third, fourth and fifth qualify for the UEFA Cup next season, Villa are currently fifth, two points ahead of Chelsea and Wednesday.